Welcome to our kitchen at Dancing Bear Ranch on Howe Mountain. My name is Brian Streeter, Culinary Director at Cake Bread Cellars. Today we're going to be doing thick cut pork chops, marinated in brine, and served alongside uh, some red wine braised cabbage. This recipe's I think got some good techniques for the home chef to learn. Pork chops, you get nice thick cut pork chops, tend to dry out very easily when you cook them. And the only way to get around that is to brine them. Pork needs to be brined for at least a day in advance. Sort of look at it as a recipe that you'd save sort of for a special occasion, for a weekend, get together with friends. It's also a nice way to show off a, a really nice glass of red wine. All right, we have our Napa Valley Merlot, really nice wine. The grapes are come from our, primarily from our Suskel Ranch property, which is a vineyard at the southern end of the valley, a little bit south of the town of Napa. This Merlot, you know, can have just as much complexity as, as a really well-made Cabernet. And I know there are a lot of Merlots out there, sort of simple and straightforward, but to me, this is a really nice glass of wine. Okay, we have our thick cut pork chops. We're gonna prepare our brine. To a saucepan, I'm gonna add two cups of water. Now I'm gonna add kosher salt. Next, I'm gonna add maple syrup. Next is brown sugar. One sprig of rosemary. A couple bay leaves. Two cloves. And four juniper berries smashed two cloves of garlic, which I'll smash. We're gonna add a little bit of cracked black pepper, bring to boil on top of the stove. Next, we're gonna pour brine into a measuring cup, and we'll add enough ice to equal four and a half cups. We're gonna set our pork chops into a container that we can store them in, and then pour the brine over the top. And now, Cover it and refrigerate overnight. First step for our red wine braised cabbage is to slice the cabbage. Peel and slice one onion. Place a wide bottom pan on top of the stove and turn to high heat. Add your olive oil, your onion, your red cabbage, a pinch of salt. As the pan heats up, give it a stir. Cover, lower the heat to medium, and cook for 10 minutes until cabbage and onions are wilted. Stir once or twice to keep the cabbage from scorching. So we're gonna cover it with red wine. A little red wine vinegar. Sugar. Add three juniper berries. And one bay leaf. Give it a stir. Let everything come to a boil and cook it down until it coats the cabbage. The cabbage and the onions take a little while to soften. I mean, they're gonna soften more as they cook in this red wine mixture, but you wanna get that started. You want them to sort of start to soften. Now we're gonna cover and cook for another 20 minutes. As you can see, almost all the liquid has evaporated and started to thicken and has coated the cabbage. We've removed the pork chops from the brine. i have set them on a towel and now I'm gonna dry them so that when they go into the skillet, they'll sear and not steam. Add a little bit of vegetable oil to the bottom of the pan. Place your pork chops in the pan, spacing them apart so that they're not touching one another. And we'll cook these until they're nice and brown on one side. Flip them over, continue cooking them until they're finished and brown on the other. Once you turn the pork over, as the second side starts to sear, you can tilt the pan a little bit, collect the fats in the corner, and then Spoon that over the top of the pork chops. That helps them to cook a little bit more evenly. It also helps to keep them nice and moist. I think our pork's about done. Um, well browned on both sides. Now we're gonna remove it from the pan and allow it to rest for five minutes. We have our finished dish. We've got our thick cut pork chops that have been marinated in brine, seared in the cast iron skillet. So they're really juicy, flavorful, and a lot of flavor from the brine. And then that cabbage has been cooked down over a long period of time on top of the stove until that red wine just coats it and really you know, carries the flavors. It's gonna be a really beautiful pairing with the Merlot. Just think that the pork and the cabbage are just gonna help accentuate the flavors in the Merlot and, and let those flavors linger. So. That's ideally what you, you want when you're looking at wine food pairing is both things taste better. So the wine's gonna taste better and the food's gonna taste better. That's success. Cheers.